everybody how's it going welcome back to the channel hope everybody's having a great day so today we're going to cover one of the most commonly asked questions that i get uh through email or on the uh around the normal sunday night videos it's about uh dipsy divers and flasher and fly and the links uh, of the leaders you know for the dipsy diver from the dipsy diver back to the flasher fly and the length of the leader uh, for the fly itself on the flasher so Today we're going to cover that. I'm actually going to go through the whole entire setup, how I set up my dipsy divers. I'm going to show you all the knots. I'm going to show you how I store my flasher fly, and I'm going to show you how I store my divers. So let's get on into that. Okay, so let's start off right here, the flasher and fly itself. Again, welcome back to my beautiful garage here in the Winter time in northern Michigan, it's been snowing pretty good out the uh, last day or so. Uh, mostly just a wet snow. It's, I think it's like 34 degrees. It's pretty warm today. Um, some people might be watching that and hear 34 and think that's warm. And for us up here, yeah, that's pretty warm in January. But uh, anyway, that's uh, irrelevant right now. Let's jump into this. Let's start right off with the flasher fly. Um, this is a... Uh, actually, I'm going to use one of the flashers and flies from the giveaway that we're doing. If you watch the last video on the Patreon thing. You know how to enter this, but whoever wins that giveaway is actually going to get one of these tied up by myself. I hope that's all right. I'm sure it will be. Uh, so let's start off right here. Brand new 8 inch Dreamweaver Double Pearl Spin Doctor. And a brand new pick, pickled, pickled Sunshine Action Fly from Dreamweaver. Sometimes I can't talk. All right. So let's jump into this. These things come with, I think it's 36 inches of, uh, of line on here. Four beads, yep, four green glow beads, the fly itself. Some people, uh, some people actually flip that thing over so the red part, you know, the tied part is down uh, on the fly. I like running it with the red part out. You see what I mean there? Yep, I run that... Uh, with the red part showing. So that's how I do it, and that's how I know most other guys do it as well. Let's get this thing unraveled without getting it stuck in my finger. All right, so yeah, one of the most common questions that I get is how long is my lead, you know, from my fly to my flasher? Let's not forget to put the fly on there. There we go. So that's all it takes to set that thing up. Just put the slide the fly right on that leader. Got your leader there. So yeah, one of the most common questions I get is how long is my leader um, from the hook to my flasher? Guys, here's where it gets really technical. And I'm going to be honest. I used to sweat this way more than I should have been. How's the car going by? I, I used to sweat this way more than I should have been. I used to go down in my in my basement i had something measured out for what did i have it at 23 and like three quarter inches or something like that i mean i just used to overthink this way too much and then i was shown this uh, by my friend scott at dreamweaver and the way he does it and i've done it this way ever since so this is super technical don't don't uh, get lost here it's gonna move pretty quick but anyway i just grab it by the hook right there at the end of the hook and i take it and i bend my hand so you can see how my hand is bent and you know that handle lock right in right there so I know that that's that's not gonna move and then I go right here to the bone on top of my shoulder but whatever that is the uh, the collarbone I guess the end of the collarbone I touch right there and that's my length that's exactly how I do it every time and it catches fish and you know me if I uh, if I catch fish if it ain't broke I ain't gonna fix it and this catches fish for me so it's super fast super easy to do on the boat you don't have to break out tape measures or anything like that Grab the hook, bend the hand right there to the bone on top of the shoulder. That's my length. I don't even know what that is. Probably around 22 to 24 inches, something like that. But anyway, let's uh, let's now jump into how I tie this, the double loop knot, and then we'll put it on the flasher. Okay, so now I got the GoPro running. I'm going to show you how I do this uh, double loop knot. I do like the way these GoPros work out. I like the footage I can get here. It really gives everybody a good, good eye, or a good view, rather, of... Uh, of everything that I'm doing. So let's get this measured out again. 
the way I just showed you, bend the hand over up to the top of the collarbone or the top of the shoulder or whatever. So now I got that, I know it's marked right there. That's my spot. All I'm gonna do, this line can be kind of tricky when they first get out of the package, but so now you got a loop right there. That, uh, that end point, that termination point was right there at the top of the loop. All I'm gonna do is make a double loop knot. And all you have to do to do that is an overhand, okay? And then another overhand. Two overhand knots, and you got yourself a double loop knot. Oops. And now I've seen some people where their loops are just huge. You know, it's like a four inch loop up here. I like keeping it pretty tight, just like that. I only got maybe what, maybe an inch there. That's about as big as my loop goes. So then pop it in your mouth, get it nice and uh, lubricated. Bring that loop down slowly. If it starts getting too long, you can just grab it and work it upwards. Yeah, that's my loop though right there. Inch, inch and a half, that's it. Okay. We're gonna trim that tag end. Well, we'll do that shortly here. I don't even have a pair of scissors out here. I should, but I don't. I'm gonna have to grab that here. But anyway, so now we got that double loop knot made. You can see it's a, it's a pretty bulky knot, but it doesn't matter. All we gotta do now, that back swivel on the spin doctor, Run that loop right through there. Well, if you don't do this for a while, you know, I mean, it's been a couple of months since I've done this, but uh, if you don't do things for a while, it, it can actually get a little cumbersome again. Anyway, you got the loop through there. All you gotta do now is put the fly through that loop. Just like that. And bring that loop down to there. And that's it. I'm gonna trim that tag in here in just a second. I gotta get a pair of scissors out of the house. Actually, I think I got some out here. I got a knife out here. Anyway, that that's it right there. Okay, so the, so through the magic of video editing, I now have a pair of scissors. And we've brought that uh, loop down nice and tight onto that swivel. That's not gonna go anywhere. So the nice thing about this knot is if you ever wanna change out your fly on this particular spin doctor, all you gotta do is just loosen that back up, work that thing back off there, or just change out the swivel. Leave the swivel on there and just change swivels. That's another easy way to do it. Anyway, let's trim up this tag end. I usually trim it up pretty close to the knot. Anyway, that is it. That is your flasher and fly all set up. That's what it's gonna look like. So now let's work on the, uh, the Dipsy Diver itself. Okay, so let's talk about the diver itself. This is a Dreamweaver deeper diver. This is the 107 millimeter, the size four. So this would be a high diver. This is what we use on our high divers. Uh, for our low divers, we use the 124 millimeter or the size, it's a size five, 124 millimeter. That's our low divers. So this is gonna be set up as a high diver. Now, I, I've talked about this in the past and uh, the color of divers. And that's a, that's a pretty highly debated question out there. Does diver color matter? And I'm gonna be honest with you, I've talked about this before. I just use black divers. It's all I've ever used. Uh, it, it works for me. Well, I can't say it's all I've ever used. We used to use all sorts of different color divers, but I found uh, the black divers have always produced for me. And like I said, just a little while ago, if something works, I'm not, if it ain't broke, I ain't gonna fix it. So that's why I use is black divers. So obviously I'm looking at this thing and you're thinking that's not a black diver. I, I don't have a black one here at the house. This is all I had. So I grabbed this. Um, now, if, if you can't find black divers, if DW's out of them or your shop's out of them, it's nothing more. You take these, uh, take the off-color divers if you want to paint or if you want to make them black. All you got to do is paint them. Grab a can of spray paint and just paint them. I do it all the time, and uh, it works out fine. The paint stays pretty good on there. Um, you might have to retouch it up maybe once in a season, but uh, it's nothing more. Spray paint, take care of that, and then you got a black diver. So anyway, this is the Dreamweaver Deeper Diver. Like I said, in the 120, I'm sorry, the 107 millimeter. They come set at zero. So if you're looking at your diver and you got to figure out which side of the boat that you're going to put on, is it going to be on the port side or is it going to be over on the starboard side? All right. So port side being left, you got an L and an R here. Starboard side being right. Say I was going to run this on the port side. I always run my divers on my high divers. I always run them on a setting number three. 
put that on number three, tighten that screw down right there, and you're good to go. If you want to run it on the right side, obviously it's just the opposite. Change that setting over to the right, and uh, by right and left, you got to remember, it's not looking off the back of the boat. It's looking towards the bow. So if you're looking towards the front of the boat, um, port side's left, starboard side is right. All right? So, so I've gotten some questions on that before, and it's not, it's not a bad question. I mean, we all got to learn it sometimes, so... That covers that. That's your Dreamweaver Deeper Diver in a nutshell. Let's put this thing together with the flasher and fly and just uh, set it up just like we were gonna go out fishing with it. So this is what I use for my, my diver, my diver leaders. Um, it is Trilene Big Game 50 pound. Uh, we got it in the shop for 10 bucks. That's not bad for 275 yards of 50 pound that that spool right there will last you a long long time if you're just making leaders and fly leaders out of it it'll last you a long long time but that is what i use for my leaders so let me show you how i measure this out again it's going to be another pretty pretty intense process so uh hang on okay so i'm going to show you how i measure out my leaders you know my dipsy diver leader from the dipsy diver itself to the flasher fly Another a common question that I get, how long is that leader? So this is a pretty, another pretty intense process right here. And it, this is another part of fishing that I used to overthink way too much. Just spent way too much time. And oh my God, you know, it was two foot too long. Is it two foot too short? Is it whatever? Um, I started doing it this way and it's worked for me. So again, if it's working, I don't change it. Another car going by right now, of course. I don't think I've had a car go by in the last two hours. Uh, I live like in the middle of nowhere, so I, I swear as soon as I turn the camera on, it's rush hour out there. I don't, I don't know why, but it is. Anyway, this is what I do. This is how I measure out my leaders. Grab the end. I'm six feet tall, so you can understand, kind of give you a rough shot estimate of how long this thing's going to be. If you're six feet tall, you should have pretty close to a six foot wingspan. So first one, I just pull it out, my full wingspan, let it go, come back here to the spool, grab it. Pull it out my wingspan, come back, grab it again. So it's three wingspan pulls, and I just cut it right there, and that's it. That's how long my leader is, that's how I do it day in and day out on the boat. It's always worked well, since I started doing it, it's worked well for me. There are times, and this is my, my salmon leaders. You gotta remember that, this is for my salmon setups. If I'm doing lake trout, it's a little different process. Somewhere down the road, I'll cover that. But uh, typically for lake trout, it's about two poles, two full poles. So it's about six feet less. So anyway, this is my, my salmon setup, about 18 feet, give or take. You know, after you put the knots in, probably closer to 17 feet. So anyway, let's get this thing set up. Okay, so let's bring this whole thing together. Uh, we'll get this all set up, show you the knots and everything that I use. And again, this is how I, I store my, my flasher and fly. It's just a pool noodle. You can also use the uh, the pipe insulation if you want. I use both. I just cut a, you know cut it down to size, cut a slit in one end, stick it. I usually stick it over the fin side because it fits into the uh, the flasher files, the DW flasher files a little better that way. And I'm just gonna wrap wrap the leader around it. And the hook just goes right in there. That's nice, easy, neat way to do it. Keeps everything nice and nice and orderly. All right, so anyway, let's put this thing together. Got our diver, got our leader, and we got a snubber. And you gotta have a snubber, especially for kings. They hit it so darn hard, you gotta have a snubber. So what a snubber is, it, it's really just a shock absorber. When the fish hits it, um, it gives a, a real good amount of stretch. Because you got to think about it, you're pulling that, uh, a lot of guys run braid, I use wire, most guys use wire, wire line. So wire line coming down to the diver, leader going off the back with a snubber right there. When that fish hits it, of course that braid and that wire has no stretch at all. And uh, something's got to give. And when a big king smacks that thing, something's got to give. So that's what that snubber is there for. That's going to go right on the back here, and that'll give a lot of, uh, a lot of, like I said, shock absorption you know, to that fish strike. So you got to run a snubber on there. Snubbers come with a swivel on one end and a double, or a, well, what are these called? A, 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 
I can't think of a barrel swivel. Barrel swivel on that end. So all you're going to do, put your snubber on the back of your dipsy diver. And then you're just going to tie your leader onto the back end of that thing. There goes another car. Rush hour. <clears throat> Alright, so the knot I use on this thing is just a double clinch knot. Pretty easy to use. Just gonna run the uh, line through the swivel, loop it around, go back the same way through, make sure you're going back the same way, otherwise you're just gonna defeat the purpose. Bring it down to it's a loop, and then I go around about five times. Just bring that tag in around about five times. So, one, two. 50 pound line in 30 degree weather can be a little bit a little bit holy cow hold on a little bit cumbersome it gets a little bit uh a little stiff one two three four that's about five and i like to count my lot or count my uh my twists i got one two three four as long as i got five i'm good with that all right make sure to make sure to pop that in your mouth make sure it's nice and lubricated now that tag end is just going to come down right through that loop that you made. All right. And you're going to bring that knot together slowly. I always bring your knots together slow. You don't want to heat them up. You don't want to put a burn spot in your knot. Make sure that's nice and snug. And you can do this with this uh, double clinch knot where the uh, loops go around. You can actually snug it down. If you just bring your fingers down on the top like that. Make sure that's nice and snug. All right. Trim off your tag end. There we go. So now we got Dipsy Diver. Okay, got to think. Line from the rod is coming down. That arm's locked in place. Line's coming down to there. That's locking in place, that's planing through the water, and that's why that weight's on the back. It's going to make it twist one way or the other. So this one's going to be twisting this way. It's going to run through the water that way. All right. Dipsy Diver. Snubber. Leader. About 18 feet or so. To the back end, to the business end. This is where your flasher and fly is going to go. <clears throat> So this is how I do this. Dreamweaver spin doctors come with a swivel on the front end of them. I highly recommend that you don't tie a swivel on here and then put that swivel onto there. Don't run double swivels. Just use a single swivel. The only caveat to that, the only, the only time I run double swivels is if I'm running trout gear because it's down on the bottom and it's, ca it's catching a lot of junk down there, weeds, sand, you name it. Double swivels will help it stay rotating. But always, for me anyway, I always run just one swivel. So for this end, I'm just going to do a Palomar knot. I've shown you this in another video, but it's pretty darn easy to do. You're just going to make a loop. Swivel. All right. Tie an overhand knot. Swivel goes through the, the loop. Pop it in your mouth. Bring it down nice and slow. All right. Trim it off. There you go. Now, <laughs> diver, snubber, leader. Single swivel. It's going to go onto your spin doctor. You're going to throw that in the water and you're going to catch giant fish. Hopefully. All right. That's it. I mean, that is it. That is your flasher fly setup. That's all your leaders explain, not to explain. This is actually uh, how I do it. Like I said, day in and day out. This was what works for me. And uh, if it, like I said, if it works, I ain't going to fix it. So that's the way I do it. Feel free to experiment around, of course, with anything that you want to try. That's what's a great thing. 
great thing about fishing. I'm laughing because there are cars going by. I'm telling you, we haven't had two cars go by in my place probably all day. It's like a it's like a magnet. Anyway, this is my flash or fly setup. I'm gonna show you now how I store this this diver with this leader on here. Seeing a lot of different ways. Um, there's a lot of really good ways. This is again the way that I do it. And it's pretty fast and it's pretty easy. So arm open on the diver. You're gonna grab the line. Make sure you're not wrapping the snubber up in this thing. Let that snubber just sit off to the side. What I do is I just take that top of that snubber right there. I just pinch it down with my thumb. All right, now I'm just gonna wrap this around here. In that little channel between the arm and the cradle, go wrap through there, come around to the back of that S ring. I like picking that up with the line. You can see that that line picked it up, kind of brought it up with it. And I'm just gonna keep wrapping just like that. Now, after a while, you can let go with your thumb right there and I'll start using my thumb to guide the rest of that line around. <clears throat> Excuse me. That thumb right there is a nice little grabber. Keeps the line going where you want it to. Keeps it from jumping off. You get down to that swivel. Sometimes I tie it out or I measure it out just right by luck. And that swivel will come around and it's just going through there and it, it tidies it up really well, but it won't make it there today. Just get that last wrap, close the arm. That's it. That thing is sitting there ready to go. And what we'll do at the beginning of the day, that's your business end right there. I'll grab whatever presentation I got going if I want to run, you know, if I'm running this double pearl with a fly, which a lot of times I am. <clears throat> I'll just grab it, throw it on there. And I'll put that right down in the corner of the boat on the side of the on the side of the boat that it's going to go on. If it's going to go on the port side, I'll set it right down in the corner, and it is sitting there ready for me to go. If I'm going to run a meat rig, I'll do the same thing. I'll just grab a meat rig and throw it on there. It's a nice, fast, orderly way to get everything prepared, and you're ready to go fishing. Everything's sitting right there for you. So that is it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, hey, throw a thumbs up on there. I do appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed and you're thinking about it, we appreciate that also. But I always say, I'm not here to beg for that. Um, so your choice, of course, free world. Free world. That's it. Got any questions, comments, throw, throw them down there in the comment section. I'm always happy to answer any questions that you may have. And we'll see everybody at 7 o'clock on Sunday for our live fishing and uh, live fishing report and our pro tip of the week. All right, everybody, here's a thumbs up for you. Take care. Be safe. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.